Thank you very much. Um, so th we've, we've talked a lot around education during the day. Um, so this is the opportunity to focus on it in a little more detail. Um, and we've got a very, uh, another distinguished panel for, for running that conversation. Um, Peter Shergold, who's been the long-standing Chancellor of the University of Western Sydney, amongst many other, many other things, um, is our first speaker. Passy Salberg, who's a Professor of Education at the University, Southern Cross University in Lismore. Um, Kim Bestwick, who's the director of the Gonstein Institute for Education at the University of New South Wales, and Lisa Jackson Pulver, uh, PVC Indigenous at the University of Sydney, who's very kindly stepped in uh, to this panel today. So, thank you, Kim. Thank you, Kim. Now, Lisa. Good afternoon, everybody. It's a lovely afternoon. And uh, this is the last panel session until the wrap-up. So um, my name is Lisa. Um, my people come from Wagga Wagga in southwestern New South Wales. I'm a Koori woman. Um, and I uh, pay respects to the people of this land, the Gadigal of the Eora Nation, and recognise that the land that we're on has always been known, loved and nurtured, no matter where you're from. Um, across Australia, there's not a place that's not called country and not called loved. So I was being asked at the last minute to not be Marcia, <laughs> but I could be. I reckon the next session I'll have a, have a go at channelling a bit of Marcia because uh, she's got a lot to say, um, and I do too. But uh, I was asked to talk a little bit about the transformative power of education, um, our investment as a nation in education and take stock of that investment and how it builds a better society. So I work at a large university. My background's in public health epidemiology and everyone knows what that means nowadays. It's no longer having to explain. It's not about the skin people, uh, although some of us do deal with that. But um, I now work as one of the Deputy Vice-Chancellors at the University of Sydney and uh, I look after the Indigenous Strategy and Services portfolio, although I do uh, manage to get myself involved in significant other things across the university. So I wanted to talk specifically about one of the major levers that I've had the privilege and pleasure of being able to use in how it is we change the sector for good. Um, for many, many years, decades and decades and decades, you know, you talk about reports, oh my God, you know, we have got reports that are miles high, that are tonnes worth of effort. We write reports and then we promptly do absolutely nothing about it. We've got tomes that act as really great bricks to hold doors open. Um, and when we start looking in my own background in health, for example, in the 1970s, we had one of the best reports ever called the National Aboriginal Health Strategy. And if you pulled this out today and changed the date to 2022, there would be very little difference. And one of the things that I've learned since I became a health professional in the 70s was that the best way of making change is to get engaged and involved in the accreditation bodies. And the body I'm going to talk a bit about today is a body called Universities Australia. I know many of you know them, but I'm hoping to give you a slightly different perspective uh, as an Aboriginal academic in, in what happens with them in my world. So Universities Australia provided a, a helpful guide called Guiding Principles for Developing Indigenous Cultural Competency in Australian Universities, kind of thinking that that might help people do the trick. There was recommended sector-wide commitments to the indigenisation of curriculum using sound pedagogical frameworks. Now that makes total sense, right? Like why would you implement a curricula without anything sound that framed it up? pedagogically, just saying. Anyhow, they had this really marvellous quote, and I'll read it out to you. I'll try and do it justice. <laughs> you know where this is going, don't you? I can see it. I know Peter does. Um, so, student and staff knowledge is an understanding of Indigenous Australian cultures, histories and contemporary realities and awareness of Indigenous protocols combined with a proficiency to engage and work effectively in Indigenous contexts congruent to the expectations of Indigenous Australian people. <coughs> Now, can someone please tell me what that really means? <laughs> no, seriously, I'm, I'm, I'm really not trying to take the mickey, but it's really hard to understand what that means and what you can do practically to implement it. Now, I know it was a long time ago, right? It was 11 years ago, you know, it might as well. <laughs> 
But, you know, at the time they were also saying, you know, one of the ways that you can do this is to embed Indigenous knowledges and perspectives in your curriculum. You can include Indigenous cultural competency and create formal graduate attributes or formal graduate qualities, which is helpful. You can incorporate Indigenous Australian knowledges and perspectives into programs. You can train teaching staff in Indigenous pedagogy for teaching Indigenous studies and help them feel confident in so doing. And of course, create reporting mechanisms, because we're really good at that in the academy, aren't we? Writing reports um, and standardising and applying some sort of process of quality assurance and accountability across that curricula. Now, question. Who was therefore responsible for doing this? Do you want to have a guess? Oh, that's it. The chub chub goes to the lady over there. So yeah, absolutely. That fell on the already burdened workload, fairly junior staff, Aboriginal. 